live 2020 election coverage from NPR News and Sahan Journal. I'm Nina Moini. I'm a reporter here at NPR News. And I'm Ibrahim Hirsch, a reporter at Sahan Journal. Ibrahim, I'm so grateful to be collaborating with you tonight uh, in our two newsrooms, and we want everyone to just know we're so grateful for you spending time with us tonight. It's hard to believe it's already 8 p.m. The polls have closed, although some folks are still in line if they got there before 8, and they can and they should still vote. Uh, But we want to make sure tonight that you all know that we want to give you the most uh, up-to-date, time-sensitive coverage. So we are going to be joining in uh, here and there with NPR News, with Tom Cran and Mike Mulcahy, who are holding down the fourth there. But uh, just in light of this being such a really historic, remarkable year, uh, really a tragic year in a lot of ways for our state with the pandemic, the killing of George Floyd, and just everything that people are going through together right now, we wanted to take some time to highlight some of our various vibrant communities from around the state. And uh, one thing Ibrahim and I really wanted everyone to know that we're passionate about is that we know that, you know, no vote is guaranteed to anybody. No group of voters is a monolith. But we do want to take the time tonight to highlight some of the efforts to get different people from all kinds of backgrounds to the polls this year. And we also want to look to the future because the reality is we're not going to probably know all of the results we want to know tonight, but no matter what does happen, everybody has to get up tomorrow as Minnesotans. We've got to keep going, and we've got to keep doing whatever work uh, we see fit. So thank you again so much for joining us. Uh, our first guest that we want to bring in is one of our very own uh, NPR News, wonderful uh, people who are out there contributing every day, one of our senior fo- photojournalists, uh, Christine Wynn. So I think she's going to pop up. Oh, there she is. Hi. <laughs> Hello. How's it going? Thanks for being here. So, Christine, we know that you are overseeing a group of, I think you said, nine photojournalists that are across the state. So you're going to talk a little bit about uh, what they've they've been seeing. For sure. Yeah. I had um, We had photojournalists over in... Um, Duluth, Fond du Lac Reservation, um, over throughout the Twin Cities, um, Moorhead, and some of the rural areas. And, and they've been out just covering and photographing been going on. Um, basically, you know, things have been a little bit different this year with election. Um, and there's been a lot of like COVID precautions. And so, uh, yeah, they've just been documenting um, what voting has looked like, what democracy has looked like throughout mm. the state. And yeah. Christine, what what exactly? I mean, are they seeing? Is it you know? Are they seeing more crowded places, or things are a bit empty? You know, it's been really steady. No matter if you are in a rural part of the state, or if you've been in one of the. Um, uh, urban areas like Minneapolis, things have been really steady. There, um, uh, Tom Baker was up in Anoka County, and there were uh, about a hundred people when he first got there, even before uh, the polling place opened. Um, and even at one of the churches in um, north of Moorhead, uh, they had um, a steady stream of voters coming in, even if it was a smaller polling location, there was a steady stream of people just coming in. Well, and it's no surprise with how many Americans we know have cast their ballots early that people weren't seeing tons of lines. We know that in some of the early voting days leading up to today, we were seeing people across the state waiting in two, three hour long lines. So it's great to see that so many people in record numbers did participate in early voting. One of the things that we've been tracking um, in our newsrooms is things like disinformation or uh, intimidation efforts or people showing up to polling places. Anyone on the ground for you? Christine uh, see anything like that of of concern? Actually no that was one of the things that um, people were keeping an eye out for specifically to make sure that 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 they weren't seeing that Um, but they said it was like really smooth going every place that they went to no matter where they went. Um, I think some of the things that just struck them was uh, not like the people who might be there for um, to intimidate voters, but just how like easy things were for people. And of course there were a couple of times when they maybe have seen like a machine go down, but like, again, that, that happens like every year. So it was easy. 
And that's in line, too, with what we're hearing from our state officials. Uh, Steve Simon's going to be on, a Secretary of State later, with Mike and Tom over on the NPR side, and we'll tune into that as well. Attorney General Keith Ellison had said that he's, he's everything seems to be running smoothly, too, so that's really great. Um, and just thank you so much for being our eyes and ears out there. So many times our photojournalists are the ones who have to be out there. Uh, you know, COVID or no COVID, they're out there and they're, they're bringing us that information. So we really, really appreciate your time. Thank you. And I hope it's not too late of a night for you tonight.